Let me just take one question on that. Where's Agnes McGrorty? Agnes, right at the back. Because Agnes, I think your, your question is pretty to the point with this. Community care service in many council areas is underfunded. And the funding is also rated for other uses in most of the councils. We feel passionately that it, shouldn't own, that it should own, not only be properly funded, but it should be ring fenced. What would you do to make sure that the council's older people services get enough money and aren't used for other things? Okay, so how do you ring fence that cash? Right, Robin, just stay calm there. Let me see, we'll start the other way. Andrew? Well, I, I think that this goes back to the, the root of the, the whole role the, the question on the whole role of local authorities, how much do you want the Scottish Parliament to decide what local government does? And as far as I'm concerned, uh, I, I believe in local democracy and, uh, uh, and less of this, the ring-fence money. I, ha I hate the idea of ring-fencing because if, uh, if you give uh, local democracy and if your local councillors get it wrong, you give them hell. But if, if they can hide behind the fact that, well, the money was ring-fenced from the Scottish executive, you're stuck. Uh, so give, them, give local uh, authorities the money and let them decide their own priorities. Thank you for that, Sylvia. If I could say about ring-fencing, because although it hasn't been the older care issue so much in Stirling, the community care budget and the education budget have not been too bad at all. They've been quite good. But on rural roads, it's been pretty bad. And I'm sure my, my Tory um, uh, person here would actually agree with that. And I've been tr trying very hard to see if we could actually get more ring-fencing into areas where, in fact, there are big difficulties in different areas. And quite frankly, it's a disgrace grace that you have you encourage people to stay in their homes as they want to be independent and you leave them in the lurch and don't provide that assistance so they're in distress and it has to be properly funded there has to be an increase in funding and i think we have to look at whether we do this centrally eventually pull that in i know this is going to upset some people here but it's all very well seeing you can vote a council out but you've got to wait for four years in the meantime somebody's sitting for four years without help so i think we have to look at the the way this money is controlled. The second point I want to make, which is related to that, is I'm finding that in sheltered housing, and there, I know there's none in lots of places, in sheltered housing, they're cutting out warden services. Warden services that 20 years ago, people who may, moved in at the age of 60 had 24-hour warden service. Now they're in their 80s and 90s, they've got somebody who knocks off at five o'clock and they're supposed to press a red button. So there's a huge issue out there about the way we care for our elderly and fund it. Okay, Tommy. You know, earlier on, Andrew made a bit of a sideswipe at the proposal to change the council tax, he says that it was flawed. We had free care for the elderly introduced. We had, I don't know if you remember this in the first parliament, free travel for pensioners. And then they had to reintroduce it because they got it wrong the first time. So it's something for the big parties to have a side swipe at the smaller parties when in actual fact they've not done their own sums. Okay, but and it is, it is profoundly, problem? it's profoundly dishonest, Leslie to suggest that on the one hand we can have a national priority and nationally implemented policies but not ring fence the funds for the local authorities to do it. It's just profoundly dishonest because if you've got a national priority, <laughs> if you've got a national priority and you set national standards and I think we're all in favour of national standards, there's no way that a pensioner in one part of Scotland should be treated any less than a pensioner in another part of Scotland. So we should have national standards. And if you've got national standards, you have to provide the funding to okay. deliver the national standards. And that means there must be an element of ring fencing for money within the local authorities. No doubt about it. The lady up there mentioned uh, about Gordon Brown. What has Gordon Brown done with the £100 billion pound he took from the private pensioners? What has he done with that? On the same week, we heard the same thing. The MPs in Westminster gave themselves... £10,000 raise in their expenses. That's where the funding should be coming back to the pensioners, not to the MPs who should be representing us instead of awarding themselves £10,000. It's right. wrong. OK. Graham? I think the key 
thing w uh, with, it, with this whole business about it, uh, personal care is it is a legal entitlement because that's what the whole issue was about, passing a, a bill in Parliament, yet 24 out of the 32 local authorities are not providing it. Now, if people weren't to pay their council tax, for example, uh, we know it's a legal a requirement to pay council tax, the, the, the councils would be down on them like a ton of bricks. So I think what people don't understand here, why is it? A legal entitlement, and yet it's not happening. And who's well, addressing? What's your solution? What's the solution? Well, I think we, we, we possibly need a court case against these councils that are not providing it. Could I have a wee word on this? Yep. I am the only party leader who has tackled Jack McConnell over the last six months on the funding of social work. I've been in constant um, conversations with the Association of Directors of Social Work. And the what problem you, is this, the problem is this, that the executive consistently refuse to fail to own up to the fact that they are not giving enough money for core services. And this is why they are raiding the other services. They then come back to me, and Jack McConnell came back to me and said, ah, oh, but we're giving lots more money to social services. And he listed a whole little list of, of, of the executive's pet projects. Those pet projects are ring-fenced, but they're not ring-fenced in community care. So two things have to be done. It's not going to be enough to ring-fence community care. What I've been pursuing also has to be acknowledged and dealt with, and that is that they're not giving enough for core social okay. services.